There are a couple things I really wanted to go over with you all today, and I really wanted to be able to answer your all's questions. Um, I am a patient with cystic fibrosis. What is cystic fibrosis? Cystic fibrosis is a chronic illness. The life expectancy currently is 31 years of age. I was diagnosed with it at three months, and right now there is no cure, and we do have several advances in medicine. However, the disease is progressive, so as I grow up, it gets harder and harder each day for me to survive and live a normal life. I do about three, three to four hours of different kinds of physical therapy. I take about six to eight breathing treatments a day, both um, prescription and non-prescription. I take about 50 to 60 pills a day and do a multi, tons of inhalers. And this is when I'm healthy. Cystic fibrosis involves two main organs in the body, the pancreas, and it involves the lungs. It is a respiratory disease, however, so obviously it would involve the lungs. I don't know how much you guys know about cystic fibrosis, but I'll give you a quick overview on basically what it is. In the pancreas, when you have cystic fibrosis, it is a buildup of mucus. When it gets in the pancreas, it makes it very hard to digest food, which the pancreas produces enzymes, and when the mucus gets into the pancreas, those enzymes are basically worthless. So we take these pills called enzymes every time before we eat. And the lungs, through our air tubes, it puts very, very thick secretion, which provides a great place for the common cold, the flu, allergies, anything like that, to grow into things like pseudomonas, pneumonia, all kinds of different respiratory diseases that can put us in the hospital for months at a time during the year. Last year, I spent almost up to six to eight months on intravenous medicine IVs. So, as you can see, cystic fibrosis is not something that we go to the doctor for every once in a while to see what's going on. We are a doctor to ourselves every single day of the year and have been since we were little and could learn to talk. The other thing I really wanted to go over with you guys was when you have a chronic illness, whether it be cystic fibrosis or something like cancer, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, any of those things. It does not just affect the patient. It affects the entire family, including the siblings, friends of the family, anyone who comes and, and tries to help that patient endure what they are enduring in life. They are a part of what my mom just said was a great way of putting this all together as a committee. We're like a board of committees trying to solve an unsolvable problem but with the help of everyone, and including the doctors who are on the committee, can help the president or the patient endure their problem the best way they know how. So, when you're going into a doctor's office, whether it be in the hospital or just for a checkup visit, I think that the best way my mom and I and my sister and my dad have all decided is when you work together as a team, that's when you feel most successful. If a doctor comes in and starts trying to talk over our heads or specifically talk to my parents or me or leave out my sister Jane, it puts up this kind of a wall that makes us not feel nearly as comfortable as if we're all working together. And if you think about it, when you have a team, how many times have you been extremely more successful in getting whatever your project is done than if one person in that group tries to completely take it over and do it, take it upon themselves to complete the project? So I really wanted to spend a lot of my time speaking to you guys today, asking, um, taking your all's questions, and then something that you might ask me might um, make me think of something else to talk about. So is there any questions so far that you have thought of? Okay, well, oh, yes, go ahead. Right, just from like a financial standpoint, how have you been able to deal with it? Have an insurance that covered? Um, fortunately, before I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, my parents did buy a million dollar cap life insurance plan for me. However, for most people with cystic fibrosis, it is extremely hard to get insurance, and if you can, 
it's, it's extremely difficult. Cystic fibrosis is a huge financial burden upon a family. A lot of times you'll see parents getting divorces, uh, siblings of the family have other psychiatric problems, so social problems, there's all kinds of things. That's, that's why it's so important that it doesn't just affect the patient. Because it is such a financial burden, it really, that's a good question, it is a very difficult disease to manage, but we are very lucky to have happened to fall into that plan before they diagnosed me, so. Are there any other questions? Yes. Is there a, uh, like, cystic fibrosis group that has support groups or all those cystic fibrosis? Yes, there is. There is a cystic fibrosis support group um, here in Tulsa, and there are support groups all over the country. And my family has decided more towards, we, we've gone to several support groups, but when the support we mostly get from, where we get most of our support, is by working with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which is the foundation that raises money for cystic fibrosis to find a cure. And it, we're kind of tackling the disease in two ways. One, obviously, is I'm doing all my medicine all the time, right, Mom? And uh, making sure I get all of that done. And we're also trying to tackle it from the side of it is not, it does not have a cure yet. But when we visibly see people raising money, working hard, putting their tears and sweat into this disease together, we can see that we are getting closer each day to a cure. So there is, there is a support group. My mom. <laughs> I was just going to say that I know this is true with a lot of other diseases too. Because John and I have been um, asked to contribute information about a lot of other chronic illnesses. One wonderful tool, in addition to support groups, which we do go to now and then when we need something in particular, especially, but the internet is becoming a great resource for people like us because you can go on the internet whether you have MS, whether you have CF, whether you have some other illness and talk to patients or talk to parents or siblings all over the world and say, okay, here's our situation. What, if, does anybody else have a situation out there? And what do you do about it? It really has been a great resource. And I see that happening more. The there, there really are several resources out there. My parents have written a book. When I was diagnosed um, 18 years ago, there was really no book out there that they could buy that really gave them hope and they wrote this Beard of Low, and my mom's gonna be handing that out afterwards. Robin has it right there. I know some of you have read it, but for those of you who haven't, it is a really good book to give you a further idea of things I don't have time to say. I obviously can't read a book. But um, it really gives you a great idea on what goes on the other 23 hours we are not um, seeing a doctor. And not just for cystic fibrosis families, but for any family that has a serious illness, whether it be chronic or, again, cancer, anything like that. So it really gives you a good perspective. So. What are the, the positives and the negatives as far as the community reaction to um, you know, fibrosis? Uh, for instance, uh, what discrimination do you face and what's, what support do you face? Um, I have been extremely, extremely blessed. Uh, I have never actually been discriminated against in any way, shape, or form. I have never felt isolated because of my disease, and I have never felt like anyone was uncomfortable being around me because of my cystic fibrosis. Everyone has been so inclusive, and I think part of the reason for that is because my family has been so open about my disease and assuring me when I was little that, you know, I have blue eyes, blonde hair, and cystic fibrosis. The next kid in my class might have had brown hair, green eyes, and their parents might have been divorced. So every kid has a problem growing up in school. Now I'm in closer to college and growing up, and I have become to realize that if, if, if I'm comfortable with what I have, then it's going to allow people around me to feel a lot more comfortable. You know, it's just like the kids when you were little that 
felt uncomfortable around being big groups, they're not going to be coming, you know, reaching out to you to bring you in. So I really have never been discriminated against because of my disease, and that's, you know, that's amazing. It's not always that way. You know, there are the kids with cystic fibrosis that have never told anyone except their family members because they are afraid of that. But I think that if you can really be comfortable with who you are, whether it be it, me having cystic fibrosis and your family having that support, you can end up realizing that it's okay and you're going to get through this together. And I think that's, that's really important. And I know that's where I get a lot of my hope is from my friends and knowing that people are okay with that. And they're actually helping me to get through my struggle. So I would, you know, do you, do you agree? Yeah, so. Anyways, what, is, what else? Where do you want to go to college? Uh, well, actually, I think I'm going to go to TU next year. So I'm really sorry about that. But nothing against OSU. It's just a little closer to home. So. Um, that's a great question. When I was um, younger, uh, I was in pretty much all the sports that I wanted to be in. I played basketball and tennis and um, took ballet for a couple weeks, but I like jazz better. Um, you know, it's just this whole thing I just didn't quite get. I mean, it's a little more difficult for me, but uh, so anyways, I, I have been in several different activities. Now that I'm getting older and, as I said, CF is a progressive disease, it seems like it is harder for me to find that energy that a lot of the kids, my peers, um, seem to have this, you know, this energy source that just keeps coming and coming. And for me, I really have to be careful with that. I definitely need to get plenty of rest and everything else. And I feel like I joke all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm 80. I'm 87 now, guys. You know, anything past nine is not going to work. But um, I still go out. I hang out with my friends. I'm involved in the community, obviously, with raising money. Um, I've done several. I've, I was a football manager at Bishop Kelly. I love doing that. I got tackled on the sidelines um, two or three times, one with my IVs. And it was about that close to coming out, and everyone was just like, oh, my God. But it turned out to be OK. Um, so there really hasn't been any specific activities that I could not participate in because of my CF, but I would also not go as far to say that because of my CF, I still get to participate, or I, I get to participate in everything I want to. Now, I kind of have to more pick and choose. So it's, it's getting harder, but I'm still, I'm, 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 I know it's, it's a struggle with kids with CF, but um, I, I take, I don't take anything for granted, so every time that I get to go out and be with my friends is a special time. But I, when I hang out with my parents at home, I really, my parents and their friends are really, I mean, I know it sounds weird, but they're a really cool group of people, so. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so, what else? How do you see there's no cure for cystic fibrosis, but do you see the management and treatments getting any better? Okay, she asked, I don't know if you guys can hear, she asked um, that there is no cure for CF, but does she see that having good management with your medicine help to prolong your life? Is that what you're asking? Is the management of the disease getting easier or better? Oh, okay, okay. I, it's side effect of the medicine. I can't hear anything. Um, my mom's been promising me hearing aids every Christmas since I was about two, but... Anyways, um, or hearing enhancers for the young, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, what, okay, so she, she wants to know, is it getting easier, the management, because of the advances in medicine? Um, I think that's on an individual basis. My parents have been really good at being a police about making sure I do my medicine in a way of saying, you know what? Lo, well, this is your choice, but you know if you don't do your treatments, you know if you don't do your therapist that you may get a couple extra hours of um, time to do whatever you want now, but it's going to put you in the hospital in a couple months. So 
It's really on an individual basis. I can't. I, I can speak for myself, but I can't speak for others. I will say that doing the pills, the therapies, having getting in a routine and sticking to that routine, it's like any exercise program. If you stick to your exercise exercise program, then you're going to stay healthier. You're going to feel better. If you don't, you have a problem with weight. You're going to get fat. You know, if you don't do your CF stuff, you're going to get sick. So um, there has been no advances to shorten the CF routine exactly. So in that sense, no. They have come out with medicines that can help prevent you from getting um, pseudomonas as much and things like that. But they're, I mean, they haven't like found an inhaler to take out a breathing treatment or something like that, really. They have to a point, but I, I mean, it, and it also just depends on how serious your CF is. So, what else? I, I doubt that they all know what the therapist is. I, I haven't mentioned therapist. No, she didn't, did she? I, I, I mentioned physical therapy. I, I, I know you guys know what physical therapy is. Oops. Right. Um, but I actually have a therapist, and that, that could kind of uh, talk into what you were saying is, a therapist is a machine that uh, basically percussion for PTs, people that are physical therapist, this, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? No. Okay, therapist, when, when you have especially respiratory diseases, asthma, cystic fibrosis, even patients that don't have this with pneumonia, a lot of times when you're in the hospital or even if you're not in the hospital and you have something serious, you can go someplace to see a physical therapist who will do percussion on your back, your sides, and your chest to help break up the mucus in your lungs, which is, supposed to help you get it out. It is a lot more difficult with patient, for patients with CF. A lot of times, instead of trying to get it out, it's at least keeping it, you know, it's not getting thick and hard in the lungs. So, I know some of you are still eating, but you're gonna be doctors, so get used to it. So, are there, yes? What are some of your plans for the future? Plans for the future? Um, well, I am 18. I'm about ready to go to college. So uh, when you guys were get about ready to that, make that decision, you were going here one day and here the next day. And um, I am going to TU. I do know that. I would love to be a professional speaker because there are several advantages to doing that for, for me. I think it would be very difficult to hold down a 9 to 5 job and be able to be there all the time because my absences are so unexpected and I can't predict them. So I would love to do professional speaking. I really enjoy doing that. And I would love to, um, I also am taking, I took ecology and I love ecology. I think environmental politics would be fun. I mean, there's just so many things. I'm still so young that, you know, in this life I'll do this, 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 and this. So, but I'm going to stick with um, public speaking right now. So that's really what I want to get into in college, communications. So. Who manages your care? What type of physicians and family practitioners are as a specialist? Yeah. Uh, I actually have a pulmonary specialist who is a CF doctor, a specialist doctor in Tulsa named John Kramer. And he has been in that practice since he started. And he is 76. So he is, he is incredible. I mean, he knows. And, and he has been the most aggressive doctor and taking care of cystic fibrosis patients. And over, we looked at a, um, kind of a paper on whose patients were doing well and whose weren't, and that aggressive type of medicine that we were, he was making his patients do, they are out of the hospital the most, they are long-term staying alive the longest without the most physical demands of having juvenile arthritis, which is a side effect of a lot of um, chronic diseases like cystic fibrosis and stuff like that. So that's who's currently taking care of me and my parents. <laughs> I saw a question right there. Yeah? Um, how hard is it, has it been for you to keep up with your score? Being on, on, I mean, yes, OK. Um, I'm an independent study right now. And uh, I actually kind of quit going to school my sophomore year and started doing independent study. So I'm still doing it through Bishop Kelly, but I have a tutor who, you know, is supposed to make the load a lot easier, but she is an amazing teacher. She's, she's young and she's a lot of fun, but she really, I mean, she's a battle axe. 
So it's like, oh, school today, you know, so, but she's, she's really good. So it, it's been very difficult for me to keep up with school, but at the same time, I love to learn. I love school. I love everything like that. So when I am feeling healthy, I really like to move fast and learn everything. So I don't want to feel like I'm not learning as much as the next person because of my CF. So. A question for your mom. Um, from your experience, what age and how did you let your daughter know that she has a real serious condition? And have you learned anything from that? Is there a better, not so good way to introduce your daughter to her? We had a, uh, did everybody get a question? Uh, we have an interesting situation at our house because uh, Dawn and I counted up. Since Lo has been born between the two of us, we've had 17 major operations since she's been born. Before that... We're a healthy family. <laughs> you know what? You want to marry any of us. Um, hey, Mom. No. <laughs> These are doctors. Good, good, good people. <laughs> yeah. You're married happily. I'm not. <coughs> time for you guys to go but also in kind of answer to your question I did know something was different about me because I was the only one taking pills before I ate I wore a mask every night before I went to bed I was sick a lot of times so I knew what did I do mom was I bad when I was little but so it's hard to keep something like that from from your child so if you are in that position it, I think it is really important to be as open as possible so that they if, if they ever have questions they can feel like I can ask it instead of I don't want to know the answer. Do you see what I'm saying? So anyways, so I guess you guys are almost late, so I'll write notes for everyone. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. But, so anyways, well thank you very much for allowing me to come today and the lunch was great. And